Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Nazar, and today we have another bonka rig. And today is going to be a special uh, bonka rig because we are at Real Five Studios in PJ. So it's a recording studio. It's they are also doing for movies as well. So let's check it out. Hey, hey. You. welcome to Real Five Studios. Thank you so Hi. much. All right, let's come in. So we are here at the studio with Mr. Wei Chen and Mr. Eric. All right. So uh, I was amazed when I first stepped in, and I feel like I'm at home. So can you like tell me the, stu the, the, the studio, the layout that you guys did over here? Why? Right, thanks, Ryan. I'm glad you felt that way because uh, that's uh, exactly actually what we wanted uh, our clients to feel when they enter into this space. All right. So we are currently now at the, the lobby of our studio. Okay. Uh, it's a lobby as well as a hangout area, uh, whereby you know when um, we are preparing for the session or you know taking breaks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know my clients are just uh, chill and eat here and to you know and, and basically to. To, to enjoy this space. Huh? Can you tell us a little bit about your studio? What is, like, how long have you guys been in the industry? How long is the building? Right. We started Real Five Studios, I think, about um, seven or eight years ago. All right. Yeah. Okay. Since then, uh, we've been actively uh, like serving the, the entertainment industry. Mm. Two sides of things uh, of, of what we do, actually music production. Okay. Yeah, music production whereby uh, you know it could be recording in this space, uh, it could be music arrangement, mm -hmm. uh, it could be uh, mixing and mastering, uh, depending on like uh, what the labels or the artists uh, needs to achieve. And on the other side of things, it's mainly uh, audio post production, okay. audio post production for films. Oh, okay, right. And then uh, uh, on commercial side of things as well. Our studio, we are moving towards getting certified by Dolby. Because we're setting up um, an Atmos uh, recording space. Oh wow! That's so <laughs> yeah, I mean we we are excited getting certified by by Dolby as well. From there, the audio post production side, that like whatever you hear in the cinema, oh, yes. that's that's what we do. You know, like for our film, the music, you know, sound effects. Yeah, so that's basically what we do. The studio itself. So how long have you guys been here, and like what kind of what kind of like layouts do you guys have like? Uh, we are now at the lounge area. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, well, uh, we are relatively new in this space. Okay. Yeah. And uh, because we've been planning to, to to build a new studio for the longest time, mm -hmm. but well, thanks to the pandemic, everything uh, basically okay. needs to stop. <laughs> and um, well, the pandemic serves uh, well on the bright side uh, because pandemic hits our industry pretty bad, and and we actually have time. During the pandemic, to really think about uh, like what we want, okay. uh, what we want to achieve in, in, in our new studio. All right. So that gives us time to really plan for this new uh, this entire space. Mm -hmm. And so so yeah. So I think uh, operating here, uh, I think officially we actually started probably last year December. Last year December. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's close to one year being here in this space. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know what? Shall we bring him around and, and talk? Let's see. Today? Yeah, let's go and check out all the gears. All right, let's, let's go. go. Yeah. So, are you ready, Aaron? Yep. Shall we start? Yep. Okay, so we are in. So we are in the first room. All right. So tell us what's going on. I've seen like a lot of things going on here. Yep. Right. Basically, this is a uh, um, uh, ammo setup. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, as you can see, there's like five speakers in front. Okay. So um, there's a there's a pair which is different. Mm -hmm. So that is our stereo speakers. All right. And then what you see on the general light. Uh, 8000 series. Okay. Those are our ammo speakers. So as you can see on on the surround, 
yeah, we have surround, and then for the ammos, we have uh, the top the, speakers. Uh, yeah, the top, top speakers. Right. Okay. okay, so I might be like an idiot like everybody else, but what is Atmos actually? Well, Atmos is basically like basic like hearing is, is stereo. Stereo is basically left and right, right? All right. So like a, a notch up from stereo, basically you have like um, like a surround, surround which okay. is uh, uh, basically it's 5.1. Okay. 5.1 is basically meaning that like, you have a center, left, right, and then there's two rear. Okay. Point one is actually the, the subwoofer. Okay. Yeah, so like if you, if you go another step up, it's actually 7.1. Uh, basically adding another extra uh, two rear speakers. All right. But when we mentioned Atmos, it's basically giving a more more perspective. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so there is 7.1.4, which is uh, four speakers on, on, on the top. top. Right. Yeah. I see. Right. Yeah. So because like surround, you can listen like 360. Mm. But for Atmos, you can like there's another dimension. Yeah. So like. You can do it immersive like, play. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. How how is it like mixing doing work with the surround three hundred and sixty kind of sound? It is very experimental. Okay. Yeah. Compared to like um what we usually mix on surround sound. Like All right. A five point one or seven point one. So this um the setup is a bit more complex. Okay. Yeah, especially on the software side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. It is very interesting to to listen like oh wow I I, I can do something like this something like that All yeah right. so it it is very interesting to to explore in uh, at most setup yeah all right all right I see okay so uh we talked about the atmos now let's talk about your gears that gears. you use in the studios the main ones are like rack gears okay so um what we have here are are the uh, the audio interface which we use Orion Studio. Okay. And then uh, there's 500 series uh, preamps and compressors. All right. And compressors and compressors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, it's more of a mix and match we, uh, of something we we like. Mm -hmm. Some compressors or pre preamps that we love, like all the combination of the preamps. All right. And yeah, and more compressors and preamps. <laughs> If you want something like more aggressive, mm -hmm. more punchier, okay. uh, let's say on the vocals or even on the kick drums. All right. Yeah, I'll use this for tracking. Okay. Yeah. So if like during my mixing, we usually because uh, the hardware and selection that we have, mm -hmm. so we usually we do um, hybrid mixing, mm -hmm. which is analog and digital. All yeah. Right. So so we will sometimes I will route um, the vocals from my DW. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To like. Maybe uh, the one module seventy six, or, or some other EQs, okay. and route it back. Yeah, to okay. get the analog sound. All right, yeah. I see. And the DAW that you are using? We have Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Nuendo. We have Cubase. Okay. So, but the main ones we we are using are mostly Steinberg products, okay. which is Nuendo and Cubase. So Nuendo are more on. Um, the post production side, yeah. the post audio side. I see there are two headphones on this play right now. Okay, so tell us about the headphones. <laughs> yeah, um, these are the headphones made by Bayo Dynamics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so both are very, very good and expensive yes. headphones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, this one is um, it's an open back, so uh, you can see like the open design, mm -hmm. and that one is. Uh, like a uh, close back, yeah. So it's like much more concealed. So this is one nine nine zero, and this is yeah. one seven 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 zero pro. Okay. Yeah. Mainly, uh, this we use it for during check mix mm -hmm. because we need like um, alternative uh, source right. to listen to okay. listen to. So instead of like just listen to the speakers, so above that we have that um, small small speakers avantone to check uh, more on the vocals. So on this one. We check on the overall, but especially on the lows uh, of the mix, on the vocals of the clarity. Yeah, so this one serves a very good purpose. All right. Yeah, and as for that, uh, we use it mostly for tracking, mm -hmm. for recording vocals or even drums. Yeah, because it has very tight, yeah, and yet comfy uh, kind of feeling. All right. So you won't get too much leakage. Okay. On on this on the headphones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, just back to this one, right? So when you finish uh, mixing and all that right so what is your like 
process right? Uh, like so, for example, do you go with the speak sound of the speakers first, and then you check with the headphones, or how how do you do that? Uh, it always goes with what we are familiar the most, mm -hmm. which are the speakers, which we 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 are used to a lot of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we will use that as the main. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, uh, when you sit uh, for too long, then you will need like more. Uh, different source, different yeah. kind of speakers to listen to, or maybe even even to your own car speaker system, yeah, yeah, to listen to. So, this is one of like what we we prefer the most for for recording, mm. yeah, right. and for uh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> got that, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this one is like what we prefer the most for for uh, yeah for it's mixing. Yeah. Okay, I see. Okay, so I see there are two keyboards. Uh, I mean. One of it is a MIDI controller. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Can you explain? Like, uh, we'll start with this one first. This is the 32 keys. Okay. The micro keys version. So for this one, when it first I first started use, I was a bit not used to because of the keys, mm -hmm. of the small keys. But the touch itself is like so good. Okay. Uh, because we use this for for everything, like even playing chords or even using like as a as a drum. Okay. Right. Yeah. So okay. for the drum, the touch is very important. So. Uh, this has a very very good touch, surprisingly. Mm, yeah. So it takes time to use to like when I have like big fingers. Yeah. Right. So the other one is the uh, S88. So this one uh, has a weighted piano touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we use this for like when you need like a full range of like as uh, let's say piano or EPs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So or like a full range uh, when you want to play synthesizers. Yeah. So we mainly use for for this kind of. Uh, stuff. Then you have like flexibility to like play record stuff here. All right. So sometimes uh, I'll, I'll need to reach there to play or stop. So okay. instead, I'll, I'll just use like the here to here. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's very convenient. Yeah. All right. So let's check on the other room. Right. <laughs> let's go to the recording room. All right. Alright, so we are now in the recording booth. The recording space. The yeah, recording space. Alright, so I see a few mics. There's one here, there's yeah. behind you, there's on the drums. And I see that and I remember I saw the picture of Siti Noaliza. Oh yes. Right. Yes, that's she uh Siti Noaliza. She was here doing a remake uh, mm -hmm. on one of the songs. Uh, oh okay. I was stuck with uh, Lebaran. Uh, oh, it was okay, for, okay. Uh, the Raya. Raya Raya campaign. Oh, okay, and, uh, okay, yeah, she did a recording here. All right. Yeah. And uh, it's relatively quiet. Well, uh, this space needs to be quiet. The air, air conditioning it was ducted, mm. and then uh, there was some uh, acoustic treatment so that you know we get minimal um, aircon noise. All right. And we want it to be like extremely quiet in, in in this space. Okay. Yeah. How about that one? Does that serve the purpose as well? To uh, <laughs> yes, it, it, is. it does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's actually a, a a wood diffuser. Okay. Yeah. So instead of absorbing the frequencies, all right. Yeah. Instead, it diffuses diffuses uh, all the unwanted frequencies. Yeah. So oh, okay. it's partly of the decoration. The decoration. Yeah. Decoration. Yeah. And so it like, serves uh, as uh, audio purposes. Yeah. Uh, on the top, we have slight angle. Uh, panels. Okay. So these uh, also act as uh, a panel to absorb and diffuses uh, the frequency as well. Yeah, that's yeah. why I I can like I can, I could not hear like anything bounces back and all that. Yeah. yeah. So when we do um, instrument recordings, mm -hmm. yeah. So you can still get the live sound. Mm. All right. The lively sound. Uh, then without compromising all the like. Uh, the sweetness of the room and everything. Yeah. I see. All right. Okay, so thank you very much for explaining all that. Okay, so let's move on to the mics. Uh, I'm gonna start with or let's start with uh, the ones that you just you guys just acquired the warm audio. Okay, so this one this one is actually the clone of legendary Sony, Sony. C800. We've actually did uh, several recordings on this one, mm -hmm. so it sounds very new to me because in my life mm -hmm. I haven't tried any 
C800 because of the price range and, and because they are also famous around uh, around the 90s right like the industry now mm. yeah uh, you the can still see a lot yeah. Yeah. you can still mm. see a lot of people using this one All right. because of the presence the clarity it has mm. and yet it doesn't sound harsh yeah, All right. yeah so it sounds very modern to me <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, for this one. yeah and then and on the second mic we have loud 10 audio, audio. audio. Mm -hmm. so this one is fc387 so it's actually a sort of a not very clone of uh, u47 mm -hmm. okay yeah so this one has a more warm kind of tone although it's a fet mm -hmm. yeah so oh it's fe yeah oh, it's, okay yeah, right. yeah yeah because so, i thought it's big it's i thought there's tubes in it yeah <laughs> it's very heavy but, all right right yeah so this one is um, one of our go-to mics mm -hmm. for, for uh, vocal recording. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the third mic, which uh, is up, yep. used the other day. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. yeah, because we tried a lot of mics. I think the one suits her the most for that song was this mic. Yeah. What yeah. mic is this? This is AKG. Yeah, C414. C414, right. Yeah. yeah, so this mic has a very balanced kind of tone. Mm -hmm. So for for City, she has a very like explosive, very sweet yet like aggressive kind of tone. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we want to tame uh, some of her like the harshness of the vocal. Right. So we use this one at, uh, instead for the vocal mic recording, and it sounds awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see. Yeah. And the next one, WA sixty seven. Sixty seven. Yeah. The clone of U sixty seven. But this one we use a lot on uh, instruments actually. Mm -hmm. uh, surprisingly, it sounds like super good for vocals. It's a bit harsh to me. So, but for instruments, it sounds like it's already partly mixed. Oh, right. Kind of sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this one is like an awesome mic. And the only mic modeling mic we have, this one is uh, Antelope Edge Duo. Okay. Yeah, so this one has like tons of different mic models, yeah. okay. which we can choose in uh, the in software. The software, okay. Yeah, so I'm more of an analog guy, okay. but for this mic, really opens up my my expectation on mic modeling. Mic, mic, okay. Yeah, on digital stuff. Yeah, so surprisingly, um, it has a lot of modes. Yeah, you can do like figure eight, you can do omni and stuff. Okay. But it sounds awesome. Uh, how about this one? Well, this is basically a shotgun. This is what we use mainly for ADRs, like um, re-recordings of some of the lines in, in movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, uh, this is a Sennheiser MKH-50. Okay. It's such a uh, close uh, proximity. It's, it's It sounded really, really good. So, okay. so this is mainly used for of films. Okay, I yeah, see. Yeah, film recordings. All right. Yeah, yeah because um, during the dubbing, we want to re recreate the the natural sounding of what we recorded. What was done on the field. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, because on the field, they always use uh, shotguns as well. Oh, uh, yeah. So, that's why uh, we have a few selection of uh, shotguns to to, uh, to choose from. But uh, we always lost the MK, uh, MK50. Uh, it always sounded very, very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. All right, uh, and then I see there's two more mics here. So we use a lot of mics uh, for for drum recordings. Okay. So this one is a uh, is a clone of uh, U forty seven. Okay. So it's it called Peluso two two four seven. Okay. It sounded super super good uh, on vocals and on kick drums. Mm, okay. Yeah, I always use this one on kick drums, and the kick in uh, is a Sure Beta fifty two A. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's my go to because uh, we have AKG. D112, mm -hmm. we have this one, we have uh, the Audix D6, mm. yeah, this one is our go-to. Yeah, and then we have a, a, a few units of uh, Sennheiser MD421. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another legendary mic for Tom's. For the overhead, now you're looking at one, so mm. we just, we have two actually. So this one is a Neumann TRM1102. Okay. Yeah, this one sounds good on vocals, but in overhead and on acoustic guitars sounds awesome and usually we use sm57 for for the snare drum mic snare. so uh this one is uh, a beta 57 mm. oh beta 57 okay yeah so we use this for for snare drum yeah all right. and it brings up all the clarity without spilling too much do you guys do like uh electric guitar recordings as well okay so if you do what kind of mics do you use Okay, for this kind of uh, situation, usually we do was uh, reamping. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So right. sending signal into the amp and then recording, recording in back to the DAW. Mm, so okay, I see. Uh, usually we will use uh, 
ribbon mic. So one ribbon mic, modified ribbon mic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So another one which is usually SM57. If not, we will use uh, we will use a pencil mic or we will use even D414. Yeah. Yeah. To to see what's the outcome. Yeah. Right. But usually it turns out good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. And this is. Yeah. This is a TLM yeah. 102. Oh, yeah, which we use on that one. The okay. Overhead. All right. Yeah. I see. Before we go, any do you guys have anything to say to everybody that watching? Well, um, we we strive to be uh, the best in the industry. I think um, I think that's that's our vision of setting up the studio, and um, and we have like as we have introduced, we have a lot to choose from uh, according to your needs. So come to us if you need any um, services in terms of like you know music recording or audio production. Yeah, we'll be here. <laughs> all right, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for showing thank you. to us all this stuff. Yeah. So that's it, guys. That's our bonka rig for today. Be uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and share our video. See you guys next time. Bye. Thank you so much, Music Bliss, for coming over today uh, for the bonka uh, studio. And, uh, and we just really want to uh, shout out uh, our appreciation to Music Please. Uh, they've been really supportive to our studio. I felt they are one of the most complete uh, platform. If you ever need any equipment for your home setup or for your studio setup, you know where to go to. Music Please. Thank you for coming. See you guys. <laughs>